the Canon EOS R10, the successor to the Canon 90D and the recently discontinued M6 Mark II, is going to be considerably faster than we first thought. Details coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear news and rumors like the Canon R10 and R7. The Canon R10 is the successor to the Canon 90D, a DSLR camera, and it's also a successor to the M6 Mark II, a discontinued mirrorless camera on the EFM mount. Yesterday when I was talking about the Canon EOS R7, I said that the Canon R10 is looking to have the same sensor as what is in the R7, that 32.5 megapixel APS-C sensor. That wasn't reported to be BSI or stacked, although that could certainly prove to be the case. Well, the R10 is going to have a completely different sensor, a 24.2 megapixel sensor. Let's just bake that in a little bit here. 24.2 megapixel sensor. If it's a true successor to the Canon 90D and the M6 Mark II, wouldn't it have a 32.5 megapixel sensor, which is what we're getting in the R7? Okay, this is typical cripple hammer at work. After the lights went out, the cripple hammer's gone in there and smashed about these cameras before they've even gotten announced yet. A 24.2 megapixel sensor. Now, I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. I think anywhere from around 24, 26 to 30 frames per second for an APS-C camera is perfect. In fact, I think the Canon 70D is right around 20 megapixels. And I think that's more than adequate for at least my needs as a hobbyist. Professionals, I get it, you need more, though the R6 only has 20 megapixels. So 24.2 megapixels. What about BSI or stacked? Well, there's no confirmation at this point if the 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor is gonna be stacked or BSI and well, it would most likely be BSI. And if it's not BSI, it would be BSI stacked. And if it's not either of those, well, it's using older technology and that would be a surprise, but definitely surprised that Canon is going with a smaller sized sensor, 24.2. That's about a third less than the 32.5 megapixel sensor found in the Canon 90D and the M6 Mark II. But again, for me, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just highlighting how that cripple hammer is striking this camera once again, the Canon R10 struck hard by the cripple hammer with a 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor. And Craig at Canon Rumors is saying that this is a CR3. So we've got some specifications from Canon Rumors that are credited as being validated from multiple sources and considered facts. So 24.2 megapixel sensor. The only thing we don't know is whether it's BSI or stacked at this point. We'll just have to wait and see. And an announcement is due sometime around June or July, but information is fast coming out. And let's take a look at some of the other specifications for this camera. The Canon EOS R10 will have the same RFS mount as the Canon EOS R7. This is very similar to what Canon did with the EF mount. All full frame DSLR cameras had the EFF mount. And then later on, Canon came up with APS-C cameras and they gave it a mount, an EFS mount. EFS lenses could not be adapted to full frame cameras like the Canon 5D Mark IV because, well, it just wouldn't clear the mirror. However, you could take those more professional L series lenses from full frame cameras and adapt them onto APS-C DSLRs for the crop. Then when Canon came out with the R system, you were then able to take both EF and EFS lenses and adapt them onto the R5 and the R6 with a $99 adapter and both would work. Although there were some limitations, but I won't get into that right now. Suffice it to say, Canon has thought that it's a good idea to come up with an RFS. Now, I don't know if this is just to help segregate the different focal lengths so customers don't get confused. We'll just have to wait and find out what the reasoning is for this, what limitations there might be. But now I wanna to talk to you a bit about data rate over these cameras. And I want to compare them to the R5. Now, the R5, I'll take a look at my numbers here. Yeah, the R5 can do 914 million bits per second. That's shooting at 45 frames per second, continuous shooting, electronic at 20 frames per second, 914 million bits per second. The Canon EOS R7 can do a little bit better. The R7 can do 975 million bits per second, and that's shooting at 30 frames per second with a 32.5 megapixel sensor. For the R10, well, the R10 can do, are you ready for this? The R10 can do 747 million bits per second. That's an electronic mode. That's at 24.2 megapixels and at 23 frames per second. So why am I bringing out data in transit? Why is this such a big deal? Well, I think they're both gonna have that Digic X processor. It's gonna allow them to move a lot of that data. But there's one thing about data. Data is basically in several states. There's data in transit and there's data at rest. 
And even if you've got a V90 SD card, that's still considerably slower than what you can push through with the Canon R5 that has a CF Express Type B card slot. I've got several Angelbird CF Express Type B card slots, the AV Pros, the Mark IIs, and are you ready for this? They can transfer data, store data at a staggering 1.48 gigabytes per second or 1480 megabytes per second, not bits. That's a huge amount of data. So you can hold down that shutter button for 20 seconds and it's not gonna fill up the buffer. You can keep shooting. And I've done that with a test. I reviewed them and it's amazing. 20 seconds holding down that shutter button at 20 frames per second, no problem whatsoever. But on the R10 or even the R7, they both have UHS-2 card slots. And if you're using a V90 card and you're gonna be holding down that shutter button, it's gonna take a while to get those images off the camera. And if you're shooting RAW and JPEG, you want to at least get the V90 cards. And here's the thing, those V90 cards are very expensive and they're actually in some cases more expensive than CF Express Type B cards. So that's why when I look at this camera having a single UHS-2 card, and I'm not really surprised for hobbyists, that's where you kind of expect this. But when you look at that 23 frames per second, when you look at 15 frames per second mechanical, just understand that you're not gonna be holding down that shutter button for 20 seconds, 10 seconds, or maybe even three seconds unless you have at least a V90 card, and even then you might be able to get off a second or two. The, the cards are really gonna limit you in terms of how much you're gonna be able to put onto that card, how long you're gonna be able to hold down that shutter button for a spray and pray. And when it comes to video, being able to record 4K video onto the card, if you're looking at anything over 10, 15, 20 minutes, it can literally take you dozens of minutes to actually move that video off of that card once you're finished recording. And in those cases, if you're gonna be using one of these cameras for YouTube or other event type work where you're gonna be recording for long periods of time, you wanna really consider getting a Ninja 5 external recorder, and then you wanna imagine at least $600 in cost, maybe $1,000 if you get all the extra batteries and whatnot and storage that you're gonna need for it. But really pay careful attention to that because um, those storage cards are gonna be a big limitation. But what about dynamic range? What about ISO? What about all these other capabilities that really deliver the results that we're looking for, and we don't have them. All we had from Canon Rumors is four specifications that have been validated. And even still, when I look at that sensor, one thing I, if Craig, if you're watching right now, when, when you're telling us that it's a 24.2 megapixel APS-C camera or APS-C sensor, is that meaning that there is no BSI, that it won't be BSI stacked, or is that all the information you've got and it could potentially be BSI or BSI stacked? That's one thing we need to know. There's many other details we wanna to know too. What are the full resolutions and frame rates of 4K video? What about 1080? Will it do 4K video that's oversample, like 6K oversample 4K? That to me would be a huge improvement. The Canon 90D and the M6 Mark II, because they had a Digic 8 processor, were very slow, and that resulted in very soft video. Now with a Digic X processor in there, and that's my assumption that it will have a Digic X processor, because that's what Canon's throwing in all their cameras, the R5, the R6, the 1DX Mark III. And yes, it's a processor that's in their top end cameras, but it's very easy to take that processor and not use all of its capabilities. But by having a single processor across all their platform, while it might be a little bit more for the cost of the 90D, well, not the 90D, the R10 in this case, it saves them an awful lot of money across their entire product line. So there are greater savings when you look at it that way. But it, yeah, the R10 is looking to be a very interesting camera. I loved the 70D and the 80D didn't give me that much more, so I waited for the 90D. And then of course, Canon took away all I and 24 frames per second. We did get 24 frames per second put back in a firmware update, but still all I is gone. And yet, look at the Canon EOS R6, a camera that cost $2,500, and Canon still hasn't returned all I to that camera. To me, that's ridiculous, this constant cripple hammer Taking away things like that matters. To those of us that like to produce really good videos, that like detail, that like to do color correction, use LUTs and all this, to not have all I is just absolutely ridiculous. My 70D, which came out in 2013, has all I. To take it away from the 90D and not give it to us in the R6 is ridiculous. And that's why when I look at the R10 and the R7, I'm a little bit concerned. Will we get all I in this camera? Will we get all I in the R7? I really don't know, but I'm kind of doubtful. And some of the other questions you guys asked me about the video that I published yesterday is record limits. Do I think that Canon's gonna remove that 30 minute record limit? And I don't. Why? Well, look at their Canon EOS R5, a camera that costs how much? 
$3,800 and we still have that 30 minute record limit. It's ridiculous. Now the Canon EOS R3, which cost $6,000, didn't even remove the record limit either. They just moved it from 30 minutes up to six hours. And again, I couldn't imagine what possible reason they would have to not eliminate it and instead increase it to six hours. It's absolutely ridiculous. If I'm going to be recording for six hours, five hours, or even four hours, I'm going to use some sort of external recorder because the cost and the difficulty of switching out CF Express cards, uh, it's, just, it's just silliness. Now let's use this moment to take a look at the next couple of months because they're going to be a whole lot busier than I first anticipated. Coming May the 31st, 2022, so just a couple of weeks away, we have the Fujifilm X Summit, and there we expect several announcements, lenses, as well as the Fuji X-H2S, a 26 megapixel BSI stacked censored APS-C camera. So, Canon, are you listening? BSI, here we go. Now, it might be stacked, it might not be, but at least at this point, it's looking like it's BSI. What else is coming? Well, of course, Canon, we've got the R10 and the R7. We're looking at a June and July announcement. Sony, we're looking at the A3, A5, we're looking at the A9 Mark III, and we're looking at the, a, we're looking at the A7 R5, so a lot from Sony there. Panasonic, we're looking at a Lumix refresh of the S series. We don't know which cameras are going to get refreshed, but I'd definitely be looking for some sort of announcement before the end of June or maybe even July. And then, of course, there's the one camera that you guys just can't stop talking about, and that's the Canon EOS R1, Canon's flagship mirrorless camera. Sony came out with their Alpha 1 a long time ago, and we just got Nikon's announcement six months ago in the Z9, but there is nowhere to, nowhere to be seen is the Canon EOS R1. Although we did get the R3, a strange little camera with a strange price and a strange set of capabilities. And yes, I get it. For sports and fast action shooters, it makes sense, but it just seems like an odd answer to the Alpha 1 and the Z9, kind of a way of saying, hey, Look, I know, I know there's the Alpha 1 and there's the Z9. They're nice. And the R1 is nowhere to be seen. But, you know, in the meantime, here, enjoy the R3. You might like it. It's just kind of a strange camera. Uh, also, we're supposed to be, oh, the announcement for that is rumored to be, according to Canon Rumors, in the fourth quarter of this year. At the very least, we should be getting a development announcement. But everything's pointing to a release in 2023 in the second half. We could have it in January, but I think we're looking at somewhere around a May uh, release of the, um, the R1. Uh, it, it's really kind of up in the air. Everything I'm saying at this point regarding the R1 is just more or less best guess, I think. Even Canon Rumors is saying that based on parts and availability, that camera is really having a tough time. But Canon's still working on it. They're, they're looking at the R3 and other cameras too, and looking for feedback from Canon customers as to what to put in that camera. So I'm not going to get in. I'm going to do a separate video on that camera. We're also going to be getting a bunch of lenses for all of these platforms that I've mentioned. And the Canon EOS RP Mark II is supposed to be coming out in the second half. And there's a camera that sits between the EOS RP Mark II and the R6, also rumored to be announced. And then, of course, there's a slew of RF lenses as well. Some telephotos, super telephotos. An awful lot is expected to come out. I'm so dedicated that I'm going to get the information out there first with my analysis and opinion. So go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications so that way as soon as news comes out on leading edge cameras and lenses from all the major brands, including DGI, which are basically aerial camera platforms, you're going to be the latest, you're going to be in the know about the latest news and rumors. So go ahead and like, subscribe and choose all notifications. But that's it for now. I don't know if that's it for today. Who knows? There's an awful lot of information coming out. But thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.